In my spare room, I have a matching desk, cabinet and chest of drawers. The problem was, no matter how I positioned them in the room, I was left with an empty space. So I wanted to build something to fit the space. I had a piece of melamine from an old wardrobe that was a pretty good colour match for the rest of the furniture. So I thought I could use that as a top and build a cabinet out of plywood to put it on. I did a quick drawing in SketchUp. I decided to design it with sliding doors as I hadn't done anything like that before. I would need to cut a shallow groove in the plywood to act as a runner for the doors and a dado joint for the shelf. I scribbled down the measurements from SketchUp and took these to the workshop to get started. I had various offcuts of plywood, all of which were salvaged, some of it pulled out of a skip and some of it was left over from the build of my workshop. A lot of it was cracked and had screw and nail holes in, but I had some filler and I was going to paint the cabinet grey anyway, so I wasn't worried about that. So I started cutting the plywood to size on my table saw using the fence as a guide. This is the bottom panel, which I needed to create a groove in for the sliding doors to fit in. So I set the blade to cut into the 18mm plywood by about 8mm and made about 3 cuts, moving the fence by a few millimetres each time until I had a slot about 11mm wide, as the two doors I was going to make for the cabinet were going to be made from 5mm plywood and I figured I'd need at least a millimetre of play for the doors to slide properly. This is the groove for the sliding doors. This is the piece of plywood that I pulled out of a skip that I wanted to use for the sides of the cabinet. It just wouldn't cut straight on the table saw. I couldn't get the blade in line with the pencil line that I'd drawn. So I checked it with a framing square, which I really should have done before I started making the cuts and found that the piece wasn't square at all, even though it looked pretty good by eye. So I squared this off with a hand saw instead and then used that freshly sawn side against the table saw fence. and it went through much better that time. I measured the sides to find the centre and then marked up where the shelf would go as I wanted to cut a dado joint for the shelf to sit in. This time I set the blade height to around 5mm and made a series of cuts, again moving the fence a few millimetres each time until I had a dado joint that was 18mm so that the 18mm ply would fit in. <laughs> <laughs> 
Then I cleaned up the dado joint with a chisel. And I glued the shelf in and used a couple of long bar clamps and a few brad nails in the centre while the glue dried. Then I got impatient and decided to fit the bottom while the clamps were still on. I also thought it would be good to get the bottom flush with the sides before the glue for the shelf went off. I put some wood glue on. Used my finger to check the sides were flush with the bottom and then I drilled a pilot hole with a 2mm drill bit. Then used a countersink bit and screwed the bottom on with drywall screws which I just seem to use for everything at the moment. I love how easily they go in and I've never had any issues with how strong they are although I'm sure they're not as strong as wood screws. Then I ripped down a couple of battens which I glued and screwed to the top of the sides. I could then screw through these battens to fit the top when it was ready to be put on. And then I cut these to size. I used an all-purpose filler to fill any cracks and holes. And then sanded down the filler with a 200 grit paper. Then after I'd brushed all the dust away, I started applying the paint. I mixed this paint myself and it's about 95% white emulsion and 5% black gloss. It's basically whatever I could find in my shed to create a pale grey colour. I just put the paints in a container and mixed them with a piece of wood until a good consistent colour was achieved. I gave the cabinet two coats of this paint. Then I sanded down the coat of paint with a 400 grit wet and dry paper to smooth it over and applied some satin varnish to protect the paint. I applied two coats of the satin varnish as well. Then I fitted the top by screwing through the battens making sure that the drill bit was set in the chuck far enough that it wouldn't pierce through the top and also made sure that the screws weren't long enough to do the same. Then I fitted another strip of wood to the top to give the doors something to run against and I just screwed that on. 
make the doors, I had some scraps of 5mm plywood that I pulled out from a skip that I thought would be ideal as it's quite thin and not too heavy. So I cut two pieces of this to the correct height. then ripped each door to the right width with a couple of centimetres overhang so there wouldn't be a gap in between the two doors. I sanded them down and painted and varnished them too. And then when they were dry, I set them in the groove I'd cut in the bottom panel of the cabinet and made sure they fitted okay, which they did. I needed to cut something else for the front of the doors to run up against and as the overhang on the top panel at the front was only a couple of centimetres, I decided to cut an L-shaped piece which would act as a front runner for the door but also to hide the front edge of the melamine which was a slightly different colour to the top. It was a kind of beachy wood colour. So I started by ripping a piece of pine on the table saw, then lowered the blade to about 8mm and made an upright cut, then rotated the piece and made a couple of passes to create the L shape. Then I cleaned this up with a chisel. And this is the L-shaped piece finished. I gave it a coat of paint and then varnish. Then I did another test fit of the doors. I used some clamps to hold the L-shaped piece in place while I screwed it on. And I fitted it with screws by drilling through the underside of the L-shaped piece and using a big 10mm drill bit to create a countersink so the screw head wouldn't be visible. Again, I had to be careful to ensure that the screws were not long enough to go through the top. I had a couple of brass handles, not sure where they came from as they've been in my shed for a few years. I sanded them down to give them a key as I wanted to paint them grey to match the rest of the cabinet. I dipped them in the paint, shook off any excess quite vigorously and left them to dry. Then it was time to fit the handles. The bolts with these handles were too long as they were only going through a 5mm thick door so I cut them down by about 5mm using a hacksaw. I forgot to film that part. I wanted to use some hardboard for the back but unfortunately I didn't have any. But what I did have was some pegboard which is basically just hardboard with holes in it. This was pulled out of a skip too. I cut this on the table saw and then screwed this to the back of the cabinet using drywall screws. The sliding doors actually worked pretty well, but to make them even smoother, I rubbed some candle wax along the runner, which worked really well. And that was the cabinet completed. <laughs> 
and it wasn't empty for very long. 